Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Dr. Osman Akhtar and welcome to my YouTube channel. Our today topic is Hemophilia A. Basically, it is X-linked inherited disorder of coagulopathy which is characterized by defect in intrinsic pathway. X-linked disease mean when the abnormal gene lies on the X chromosome. So for example, if this chromosome goes to male baby, so that male baby will be diseased. But if this uh, abnormal gene, uh, abnormal gene on this X chromosome goes to a female baby, then this female baby with the one abnormal gene or what we should say one X, uh, abnormal X chromosome, this baby, which is female, will be carrier and most of the time it is asymptomatic. Another, let me explain this uh, coagulopathy and intrinsic pathway in this uh, proper diagram. Whenever the endothelial cell of a blood vessel get damaged or we should say a blood vessel rupture, there is cause a, a bleeding which is obvious but as the endothelial cell get damaged the platelet come here and start aggregate here and they form a temporary plaque which is also called primary clot another important thing whenever this primary clot is made it form a, it start a cascade which is called coagulation cascade one cascade or we should say one pathway is called extrinsic pathway and another is called intrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway is started by factor 8 whenever this uh, tissue uh, factor is exposed this factor 8 all of these factor initially they are uh, we should say they are inactivated but whenever the tissue factor are exposed the factor 8 become activated and this factor, uh, factor 7 sorry it is factor 7 when factor 7 activated this factor 7 will stimulate this factor 8 and this the, the, the pathway which is denoted by black color this is called common pathway so one is this pathway, one is intrinsic pathway. These platelets will also start this pathway. So factor 12 will, uh, which is uh, present inactivated, will be activated. And this factor 12 will activate factor 11, factor 11 will activate factor 9, and factor 9 will stimulate factor 8. This factor 8 will again come into the common pathway. So whenever this uh, uh, come into, both come into the common pathway, the factor 10 will be stimulated and the presence of factor 5 this factor 10 will stimulate factor 2 which is prothrombin so this prothrombin will be converted to thrombin and this thrombin have two function now first this um, thrombin will stimulate this factor 1 which is fibrino fibrinogen this fibrinogen will be stimulated and fibrin will be formed. Now this fibrin will form a meshwork, uh, uh, we should say a network will be formed and this thrombin will also stimulate this factor 30. So this how uh, whenever this fibrin and this coagulation take place they form a very uh, we should say hard clot which is called secondary clot and this secondary clot is uh, we should say a hard one but here is look at look at the where is the defect in the hemophilia as we discussed the intrinsic pathway this it, it means the problem lies in this pathway in hemophilia the factor which is abnormal uh, we should say either it is a quantitative defect or we should say uh, we can say it is a qualitative uh, quantitative or qualitative defect so this factor will be uh, abnormal I, either it is a qualitative defect or the quantity is reduced so this in the absence of this factor which is factor 8 this pathway will be not completed so the blood will not be stopped so the bleeding time will be increased 
the uh, this whole uh, situation is called hemophilia A. Now, if we look at the clinical feature of hemophilia, the hemophilia can be quantitative defect as well. So, some babies will you will see they will present to the clinic with the milder symptoms of hemophilia A. And some uh, some babies or patient will be present with the moderate or some with severe. It just depend whether how much the factor eight is missing in the um, coagulation cascade. So it is a basically if the quantitative defect is there, then on the basis of how much the factor eight is defect uh, deficient, the symptoms will be appear on that. There will be bleeding tendency, increase uh, bleeding tendency because as we discussed earlier if minor injury happens there is no um, because this def this factor 8 is deficient so there is uh, there will not be completion of the cascade so there will not be secondary plaque so the basically this is called coagulopathy there will be nosebleed gi bleed but the most important for the hemophilia we should remember is the blood in the joints which is called hemarthrosis and muscle hematoma these are quite frequently seen because you will see the child with uh, no trauma history no play uh, game history or whatsoever but they will come with the joint swollen and having blood in the joint or muscle hematoma so it is a classical picture of hemophilia a and another, this is extremely point for the even diagnosis. Usually these bleeding are observed in a neonatal life. So it is one of that condition which can be diagnosed even at a time of birth. So guys, so what are the other conditions which can be diagnosed in neonatal life or uh, I should say which can be diagnosed at a time of birth. So please, if you know such condition, write it in the comment section another is how to diagnose the family history because as we discussed earlier it is x link so either the father or from the mother side or from the father side there will be one male which having such disease in a previous time so family history play a very important role another is activated partial thromboplastin time the APTT is prolonged. This is important. One is PT, prothrombin time. Another is APTT. Remember this. If we want to look the how the um, extrinsic pathway is working or not, or we want to look at either the um, problem lies in the extrinsic pathway or intrinsic pathway, we can look at PT and APTT. If the PT is abnormal, I should say, if the PT is a, a, a prolonged, then the problem lies in the extrinsic pathway. But if the problem lies in APTT, it means the intrinsic pathway is abnormal. So as we studied earlier in hemophilia, there is defect in a factor 8, which is the uh, main factor in the intrinsic pathway so there will be APTT will be increased the clotting time will be prolonged which is very obvious and this is diagnosis uh, choice of like this is the confirmation of diagnosis there will be decrease factor 8 activity there will be if we look at the one millibrim factor there will be normal activity of the one millibrim factor but the factor 8 activity will be decreased here Another is treatment, how we will manage this uh, baby or I should say a patient. So most important is avoid the trauma. This is a main theme of our topic is avoid the trauma of such babies. The baby should not go to an aggressive sport or they, they should not go to the uh, with other like like they, they, they if they uh, went for a minor uh, injury, which even can kill them. So it's better to avoid this, even the small traumas. Yeah, I should say minor traumas. Avoid anticoagulant such as aspirin, 
we should we should avoid these things heparin aspirin heparin heparin and warfarin because it is all the, the blood is already not coagulating and if on top we give this this will be such a blunder did this in acute uh, bleeding give amino caproic acid and transaminic acid this can give uh, what should i say a, 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 a transient a relief can give to the baby can stop the bleeding for a transient time but this is a treatment of choice administration factor 8 concentrate whether if you want to give from a blood or we, you want to give from the fresh frozen plasma or you want to give from the cryo precipitate you can give just just factor 8 is required here so it is a treatment of choice thank you so much